50 years old and up to his knees in South Carolina rough behind the 17th green, Phil Mickelson had a three-stroke lead and an improbable six major championship in his grasp. All he needed to do was hit it safe and clean, something Mickelson has at times done both as well and as poorly as any golfer ever. Visions of blown leads by Mickelson and so many others who play this cruel game flashed everywhere. He couldn't screw up this one, could he? Of course he could. This is Phil, and this is golf. You can't take a knee and kill the clock. You have to fight through all 72 holes, and most important, every demon living in the recess of your mind. No one knew that better than Mickelson, who was making this late career, late aged, likely last chance charge at the PGA Championship. Younger Phil might have overswung and got it stuck. Younger Phil might have plucked it clean and sailed it into the water looming on the other side. He also might have holed it. With Phil, anything was possible, always. That was the fun part. Old Phil just took a deep breath, a 60 degree wedge, and smartly popped it up and out of the tall grass. It landed on the green, no problem, no drama. Two soft putts later, Mickelson was in the clear. One hole later, he was at 50 years, 11 months, and seven days, the oldest major champion in this old, old game. His six under was two better than Brooks Kepka and Louis Ostazen. The victory set off frenzied galleries on Kiowa Island and whoops from living rooms around the globe. Old fans reveled in seeing an encore performance by one of the game's most charismatic and approachable stars. New fans got to finally understand what their father was always talking about with this lefty guy. Walking up to the 18th fairway, Mickelson had to be guarded by law enforcement to keep his fans from hugging him and slapping him on the back. He'd always been the people's champ, a smiling, joking, gambling nod to the fun of the sport, even if a more robotic style might have won him more tournaments. He was the guy who made fun of himself, who wore his green jacket to a Krispy Kreme drive-in, who probably should have hit the fitness center a little more often. No matter, he won plenty and they loved him for it. So when he emerged from a fairway mosh pit to step onto the 18th green and finish this, it all felt right. Slightly unnerving, but exceptionally awesome, Mickelson would say with a laugh later. Phil was about to win the PGA, the hell with decorum. This is just an incredible feeling because I just believe this was possible, but everything was saying that it wasn't. Mickelson said, I hope that others find that inspiration. It may take a little extra work, a little harder effort, but gosh, it is worth it in the end. For Mickelson, this is a triumph that came out of almost nowhere. There were few tangible signs it was coming. Perhaps only he believed it was even possible. Since 2013, Mickelson has just won two times on the PGA Tour and hadn't cracked the top 20 in any event this year. Across the past 16 major championships, he went top 20 once, tied 18th at the 2019 Masters, missed five cuts and sat out two events entirely. His last five PGA championships, Tied 71, tied 71, cut, cut, tied 33. He'd reached the stage of his career where he could excel on the Champions Tour, play a nostalgia act on the main tour, and headline charity events such as last year when he and Tiger Woods teamed up with Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. He was golf's goodwill ambassador, a rollicking storytelling persona, but a contender? Before the tournament, the PGA brought 21 golfers through the media room for news conferences. Phil wasn't one of them, a sign of irrelevance. Through training and diet though, he'd built himself into a playing shape of late and kept telling everyone he was close. He'd found that at 50, he was still physically capable of competing, but he struggled with his concentration. I've got to have that clear picture and focus, he said this week. To work on that, he'd been playing 36 and even 45 holes a day, building up mental and physical stamina, trying to elongate my focus, he said, so that when I go out and play 18, it doesn't feel like it's that much. I'm trying to use my mind like a muscle and just expand it because I've gotten older. It's been more difficult for me to maintain a sharp focus, a good visualization and see the shot. This, of course, is coming from a guy whose career had been partially defined by famous mental gaffes. He carded nine top five finishes in majors before finally winning his first at the 2004 Masters. Most memorably, perhaps, he blew the 2006 US Open on the 72nd hole when he inexplicably hit his driver rather than a safe forward off the tee. Six shots and one ricochet off a hospitality tent later, he finished second and declared, I'm such an idiot. That Phil had faded into history, of course. His now six major victories is equaled or bettered by just 13 players in history. His now 45 tour victories has tied him for eighth all time. 
Whatever opportunities had been missed were mostly made up for. His inclusion among the greatest to ever play was cemented long ago. This though was the exclamation point. He's now the oldest to ever win a major by more than two and a half years. Julius Boros, 48 years, four months, 18 days previously held the mark for his 1968 PGA title. And the first, obviously, to do it after passing 50. This was no fluke either. On Sunday, he outdueled Kepka, who has four majors and recorded five other top 10 finishes since 2017, plus major champions Ustazen and Padraig Harrington. On a beast of a course that rattled everyone, young and old alike, it was Phil who was mentally the toughest. Now that he just gutted and gritted it out, he played brilliantly. Under significant pressure on the 15th, he uncorked a 337-yard drive, rolling past Kepka, two decades his junior. On 16, he went 366 yards, the longest drive by anyone there all week. Mostly though, this was a testament to ideal strategy. With his younger brother Tim on his bag, the Mickelson boys chose the right approaches, clubs, and distances. And then there was the chipping and putting, the signature full swing flop shots that defy physics. Holding in from a greenside bunker on 5 will be replayed forever. The chip from behind the green on 16 with Ustazen applying pressure on the scoreboard to set up an easy tap in birdie and a 3 shot lead may have been even better. Then there was 17. This was the full Phil experience. All week he just kept hanging around 79, 69, 70 and finally 73 for the win. It was never overwhelming, but he outlasted this oceanside course that crushed everyone else on Kiowa Island. Basically, when everyone thought Phil might fall apart, he got stronger, an old star playing his greatest hits. With five bogeys, Sunday certainly wasn't a perfect closing round, it was just a perfect result, setting off a perfectly wild celebration that perfectly defined the connection between fan base and golfer. Phil at 50, Phil Mickelson, champion again. Thank you